because they may be gone, but their deeds outlive them. The headlines lingering from the previous administration's 50 running scandals still mm, bush. Number three, Henchman Gate, Ed Morrissey of the right-wing blog Hot Air, criticizing President Obama for calling out Republican office holders who actually act on the words of comedian Rush Limbaugh, revealing one of the most underrated sleaze factors among the Bush men. One doesn't make points at all about bipartisanship by explicitly attacking another partisan voice, Morrissey writes. George Bush never attacked Keith Olbermann, Chris Matthews, or other voices of the rabid left by name. Now he had Vice President Cheney attack us by name, and Senator McCain. At minimum, Obama has the guts to do his criticizing himself. Bush didn't. Number two, Gonzo Gate. You know, you can tell this man all day that he's walking towards a propeller, and still he will not know what hit him. I don't think there's going to be a prosecution, quite frankly, Alberto Gonzalez told NPR when asked about the Bush Department of Perverting Justice, because again, these activities, they were authorized. They were supported by legal opinions at the Department of Justice. At the end of last month, Gonzalez asked the Wall Street Journal rhetorically, what is it that I did so fundamentally wrong? I mean, besides approving torture, trying to circumvent the chain of command, act justice, purging the Department of Non-Conservatives, okaying illegal spying on Americans, and hiring lawyers who got their degrees from box-top universities? Well, nothing. Uh, I mean, except what you did when you were still just the White House counsel. And number one, Gitmo Gate. You would think the Bushmen owned property there, considering how hard they are fighting to keep the place from being closed. Carl Rove in a speech at the University of Miami. One year from now, Gitmo won't be closed. If it is, there will be an uproar in the U.S. about where to put these people. John Boehner saying on Meet the Press yesterday that it would be irresponsible to move to any other location. Terrorists who have attempted to kill Americans, even though the Bush administration managed to convict almost nobody they imprisoned. Well, if they're guilty, you'd put them in federal prison, just like we put all the guys we caught who were guilty of bombing the World Trade Center in 1993, or you'd put them in the Supermax prison in Colorado where we put Terry Nichols after he was convicted of helping Timothy McVeigh kill 168 Americans in the bombing of the Murrah building in Oklahoma City. But the winner here among the debris from the Bush administration for sheer paranoia is former Bush favorite Congressman Steve King of Iowa. Listen to this. Let's just say that that Khalid Sheikh Mohammed, the mastermind of 9-11, is brought to the United States to be tried in a federal court in the United States under a federal judge, and we know what some of those judges do, and on a technicality such as, let's just say he wasn't read his Miranda rights, he is released into the streets of America, walks over and steps up into a U.S. embassy and applies for asylum for fear that he can't go back home because he spilled the beans on Al-Qaeda. What happens then if another judge grants him asylum in the United States and Khalid Sheikh Mohammed is on a path to citizenship? Citizenship. I mean, I give you the extreme example of this, unquote. Yes, I guess that. That's why they call you an extremist. Even in this delusion in which Khalid Sheikh Mohammed's case is thrown out and he is declared unlawfully arrested, he would not suddenly be entitled to stay in this country. He would be turned over to immigration and escorted back to his country of origin. It would save Congressman King a little time if he read the law before verbalizing his nightmarish fantasies. Of course, that would also prevent him from his main goal in office, trying to frighten the gullible and any sheep or other small farm animals in his constituency.